In this video we're going to be taking a look at one of the best value Intel motherboards available right now. This is the B760M DS3H from Gigabyte. Coming in at just over 100 euros or dollars, the B760M DS3H DDR4 is compatible with all of Intel's latest 12th, 13th and with the latest BIOS 14th gen CPUs. Starting with the unboxing, let's take a look at what's included. As well as the motherboard itself, we've got two SATA cables, one straight and one with a right angled connector. And here in the bottom of the box, we find the IO shield and the installation guide. So all pretty standard. Now let's take a look at the features of the motherboard itself. First, we've got the LGA 1700 CPU socket, which is compatible with Intel CPUs from 12th and 13th generations out of the box, and with BIOS version F12 or newer, you can also use the new 14th gen CPUs. Most motherboards shipping now should already have the newer BIOS, but some retailers may still be selling older stock, in which case you'll need to download the latest version from the Gigabyte website and update before you can install a 14th gen CPU. Thanks to the Q Flash Plus button on the motherboard, this is very easy to do, and you don't even need a CPU or RAM installed to do it. Just put the BIOS file on a flash drive, plug it in, and press the button. Above and to the left of the CPU socket, we've got the VRMs. And then over to the right are four DDR4 RAM slots. These slots are in two banks and support up to a maximum of 128GB with support for overclocking all the way up to DDR4-5333. There's one 16 lane PCI Express 4 slot for your GPU and below it are two single lane PCI Express 3 slots for any additional cards you might want to add like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. The lowest single lane PCI Express slot is spaced far enough down so that it's still accessible when you have a dual slot GPU installed. Although you may lose access to the top slot depending on the thickness of your GPU. Just above the 16 lane PCI Express slot, we find the first of two PCI Express 4 M2 slots for NVMe SSDs. This slot includes a heat sink and thankfully uses a normal screw, rather than those awful plastic plugs that motherboards seem to have adopted over the last few years. The second M2 slot can be found over here on the right, and this one uses the chipset PCI Express lanes while the other M2 slot is connected directly to the CPU. If you need more storage then you'll also find four SATA ports. Two are mounted flat while the other two are mounted sideways just below them. Sandwiched in between them is the front panel USB 3 header. The board supports RAID 0, RAID 1, 5 and 10 for the SATA drives. Moving on to the rear panel connectors, from right to left, we've got 2.5mm audio connectors for mic, headphones and speakers, an RJ45 connection for the onboard Realtek 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, below which are two USB 3.2 Type-A ports. Then there's another USB 3.2 Type-A port, along with a very welcome USB 3.2 Type-C port. Next there are two display port connectors in case you're using a CPU with integrated graphics and they support resolutions up to 4K with a 60Hz refresh rate. There's also an HDMI 2.1 port which again supports 4K at 60Hz and a VGA port. To end with there are a couple of USB 2 ports and PS2 ports for a keyboard or mouse. Here at the bottom of the board we find the USB 2.0 front panel headers, next to which are both 5V and 12V RGB headers, a reset button and the Q Flash Plus button for easy BIOS updates. A bit further along are headers for a serial and parallel port, and the front panel audio connectors. Above the audio connectors you can see the Realtek audio chip. This board features the ALC897 codec with 7.1 audio that can be configured in software. So as you can see this board has basically everything you could ask for in a motherboard for only around 100 euros. It's missing Wi-Fi and Bluetooth but Gigabyte do sell a version of this board with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi called the DS3H AX. Which is the exact same board but with a Wi-Fi module. 
In fact, you can see the solder points for the Wi-Fi module here above the VGA and HDMI ports. Personally, the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet is all I need, but the AX version retails for about $20 to $30 more if Wi-Fi is something that you need. Overall then, this is a fantastic full-featured board for the money. The 14th gen CPU support, dual PCI Express NVMe slots and the 4 RAM slots make it very flexible and give you some future upgrade options. Intel are going to be leaving LJ1700 behind and switching to LJ1851 when they release their 15th gen CPUs later this year. So spending several hundred on a top end LJ1700 board at this stage doesn't really make a lot of sense. For a high performance but low cost gaming PC or a video or photo editing rig without sacrificing features, this board is ideal. And it also happens to make a perfect Hackintosh, which is something I'll be showing you in a future video. If you're thinking of picking one up, there'll be some links down in the video description. That's it for now, thanks for watching.